Nikola Tesla has been hailed as one of the greatest inventors to have ever lived. Though Tesla would go on to make headlines across many different news outlets for a number of breakthroughs and inventions, there were also a number of articles posted about him during his life that spoke of a far more peculiar side of him. At the time, his unique mind wasn't appreciated, and in some cases people even tried to brand him as a mystic, and someone who didn't know what he was talking about. However, these comments didn't stop him, and Nikola Tesla wasn't one to shy away from electricity and being able to harness it. One of his famous quotes was the following, I have worked out a dynamic theory of gravity in all details and hope to give this to the world very soon. Nikola Tesla has impacted your life in one way or another. For example, electricity, radar, microwaves, the radio, drones and many other things all came from the great mind that was Nikola Tesla. Recently, the FBI has released 64 pages of unreleased documents, and these include things like paper and documents that were collected shortly after Tesla passed away. For many years now, theories have been floating around as to why Tesla's work was collected by the government. Some have said that Tesla's work wasn't important, and wouldn't have had an impact on us, and that the ideas and inventions he was working on didn't work or were just made up. So, if this was the case, why did the United States government quickly swoop in and collect his work shortly after he'd passed away? Tesla's work obviously caught the attention of the FBI, as they wanted to comb through what he'd been working on. One of the reasons for doing this was to ensure that any of his work didn't get into the wrong hands. For this reason, they decided it would be best that the documents remained in the property of the Office of Alien Property Custodian. This was, however, until the documents and other pieces of Tesla's work mysteriously disappeared after the war. Interestingly, enough discussion had been created that the public was aware of some of these alleged inventions, and it even caused citizens to question director J. Edgar Hoover about what Tesla had been working on. It's some of these extracts, though, that have caused many people to question why the government would look into this, and not only that, but also keep it a secret. These are some experts from the official FBI documents that got released. This letter will not reach you in time to cite flying saucers over New York on the night of June 13th, from 10pm to 1am, but there will again be full-scale operations of flying saucers over all American areas on July 1st. This will be in three phases as follows. New York areas July 1st 9am, Washington DC areas 9.25am, General North American areas 9.25am, Central American areas 9.30am, South American areas 9.35am. Second phase is same areas as above, beginning at 12 midday July 1st. Third phase full scale operations over all American areas beginning at 7pm on the evening of July 1st. The above information has been supplied by George King, editor of Cosmic Voice 88 The Drive Mansions, Fulham Road in London. Also, please note that George King has also published back issues of Cosmic Voice in one volume. This is, beyond doubt, the finest source of messages that we know of. George King is considered the best telepathic contact that the space people have, although George Van Tassel is the finest we have in America. Margaret Storm has been assigned to certain work with the space people. As follows, she is writing a book, a story of the life of Nikola Tesla, and the part his inventions will play in the new age. Much of the data for this book has been supplied to Mrs. Storm through transcripts received on the Tesla set, a radio type machine invented by Tesla in 1938 for interplanetary communication. Tesla died in 1943 and his engineers did not build the Tesla set until after his death. It was placed in operation in 1950, and since that time the Tesla engineers had been in close touch with spaceships. The space people have visited the Tesla engineers many times, and have told us that Tesla was a Venetian, brought to this planet as a baby in 1856, and left with Mr. and Mrs. Tesla in a remote mountain provenance in what is now Yugoslavia. 
Mr. A and Spano, 1136 Avenue, New York City. In a telephone conversation with the writer during the late evening of January 8, 1943, stated that Nikola Tesla, who is one of the world's outstanding scientists, particularly in the electrical field, and who'd passed away on January 7, 1943, at the Hotel New Yorker Wade maintained his residence, during his lifetime had conducted many experiments in connection with the wireless transmission of electrical power, and what is now commonly called the death ray. Mr. Spannell further stated that the notes and records of Tesla's experiments and formulae, together with designs of the machinery necessary to vitalize them, are among Tesla's personal effects, and that no steps have been taken to preserve them, or keep them from falling into the hands of people unfriendly to the war efforts and allied nations. Spannell continued by saying that a distant relative of Tesla, a person who was intensely disliked by Tesla, and who came to the United States from Czechoslovakia within the past year, by the name of Savo Kosvanovic, is taking steps to get possessions of these important documents and plans. Mr. Spannell believes there's a strong likelihood of Savo making this material available to the enemy in the event he is successful. Spannell advised that he's in some kind of governmental work connection with the war effort, which caused him to spend about five days each week in the nation's capital and because of the connections he has made in this capacity, he has seen fit to telephonically notify G2 headquarters in Washington, D.C., as well as Mr. Borkin of the Department of Justice in Washington. Spannell stated that Mr. Borkin advised him that he would immediately make the information available to the director of the FBI, and advised Spannell to lose no time in taking steps to see that Tessa's personal possessions were not disturbed. A few minutes after this conversation, Mr. Spannell had been in communication with Dr. Di Lozondo, one of the advisors to Vice President Wallace. After talking with Lozardo, he called back to Spannell and told him that the government was virtually interested in the effects of Tesla, particularly those dealing with the wireless transmission of electrical energy and the death ray, and for Spannell to lose no time in doing all he could to preserve them. End quote. So what do you make of these documents? And that the government was so interested in getting hold of Tessa's belongings? Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comment section below and help us to grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.